The call came around the middle of the night. Mayor Goodway had reported that the asylum that Zuma and Rubble were in had been attacked, according to the residents there. They had put all but screamed for help, before being cut off by sounds of something eating them alive, as their pleas of mercy echoed through the line went dead. Right after hearing that, May, the mayor, called Ryder and the remaining pups. The two instantly suited up and made their way to the asylum, outside of the town, where they met with the instant silence and despair. Chase could already smell the blood and guts from outside of the mental hospital, nearly gagging from the overall stench. Even though the others could smell it too, and look to be turning green, as Rocky's outfit slowly, they walked towards their flashlights, on before opening the doors. In an instant, they were greeted with a set of bodies lying around with bits of them torn open, as if they, if something ripped them apart with their bare teeth. Oh God, whispered Rocky, turning away to hide from the gory sight. What could have done this? I don't know. We should stay together and find survivors, including Zuma and Rubble, Ryder whispered as he stepped forward. Rocky and Chase both looked at each other with worry in their minds as they turned to the youngest of them. The only ones who had seen much death and they could even handle it anymore. Fear began to creep into their minds that both of their friends were either dead or going through a mental breakdown. Chase, however, was getting a sickening feeling that a certain duo thought the dead was behind all this. But why would they attack where Kirby was beyond this imaging? The two quickly caught up with Ryder and slowly made his way down the hall. Sir, I think we should wait for backup, Chase suggested. If it wasn't for the fact that Zuma and Rubble were here, I would agree with you, Chase, but I lost two pups already and I'm not willing to lose another two, Ryder remarked, getting and gritting his teeth as the tone ended the conversation right there. Chase bit his lip, but obeyed his owner. He only prayed that whoever was behind this was long gone. They passed by numerous bodies of dead patients and doctors who were killed in bloody ways. Some had their throats and faces ripped apart, others were missing entire sides of their chests, and even a few were dug their rib case cages exposed. Chase didn't even need to be a medical professional to tell that they had their organs eaten. Suddenly, the path split into two different ways. Ryder then looked in directions before turning to his team. We're going to split up. Split up? Ryder? That's how everyone dies in a horror movie, Rocky shouted, whimpering. Let's just leave, Zuma and Rubble. They're already dead by now. I don't want any of us to die either. Let's just leave. Head home and get the hell out of Adventure Bay. I don't want to lose you or Chase, or even myself to whatever the hell did this. We're not going until we find Zuma and Rubble, Rocky. That's an order, shouted Ryder, making the two back, the wet, back away. He realizes what he had done before closing his eyes. I'm sorry. I'm just scared for them. If we find them, dead or alive, I promise we'll leave. I'll even let you pups pick a new home for us to live in. But please, just this one time, let us rescue our friends. Every instinct was telling Chase to grab Ryder and run. He was for sure Rocky was thinking of the same thing. Yet he even know within death staring at them in face. He couldn't disobey them. The two slowly nodded as Ryder sighed and knelt, scratching his ears silently before, for a while, standing back up. All right, I'll head left, you two head right. The two nodded and made their way down to the path with their flashlights on, hoping that they could uh, see their owner again soon. Chase didn't even know how long they'd been searching, but so far they could all find was dead bodies and blood, Furniture was turned over or ripped apart, and there was soon no sign of survivors. Was he didn't even know where either Rubble or Zuma were for the house even during their stay. None of them could even stomach that they even faced that scene come out of their two youngest members. One always had a nervous breakdown while the other was dead in the eyes. That's when they found and they looked into the important office, pushing open the door. Rocky turned to Chase and said, Keep watch. 
Maybe there's a record of where they are. Nodding, Chase proceeded to do so, while checking both ends of the hallway with his light. A small clunking noise forced him to turn to the left, where he saw a small soda can slowly roll down towards him. He gulped and he readied his net to catch whoever it was that was nearby. But when a paw tra tapped him on the shoulder, which caused him to jump, he sighed in relief when he saw it was Rocky. He's in the next two cells over, said Rocky, nodding. Chase called to his owner. Ryder, sir, we found Rubble's location. We're going to check his room now. There was no reply. Sir? Asked a worried Chase. Zuma's dead. The two pups held their breath while staring at each other wide in the eye. The call ended there, but it was enough to make the two close their eyes in silence. He didn't deserve this. That was all Rocky said before he pressed on. None of us deserve this, Chase fought, before following Rocky. Then the two made them into their room, and that held Rubble's name and slowly opened it, only to close in disgust and sorrow. Chase had only seen a second of Rubble's missing headless body, to know who was too late. They're dead. Both of them are dead. Rocky wept as... He turned to Chase, who looked at them sympathetically. Why them, Chase? Why them? Chase didn't answer. He just turned away. Away. And then he walked in some distance before he sighed. Rocky, I'm responsible. He faced his friend confused. I I wished Marshall and Skye come back to life with the monkey's paw. And they did this, Rocky. I'm, I'm the reason for their misery. Chase, Rocky just groaned and shook his head. Chase, will you stop thinking such stu- ah! Suddenly, something came out of below and tackled Rocky to the floor, while biting him in the neck, causing him to scream. Chase yelped, but of course froze upon seeing what was dragged digging its teeth into Rocky's neck. Get it off of me! Get it off of me! Ah! It then ripped a good chunk out of the neck, causing Rocky to scream once more. Yet it became weaker, as blood began to pour out of him, with every last gasp, he lowered his head to the ground, with his eyes half open and his chest no longer moving. The creature was known as Sky. Slowly raised her rotting, undead face, and she chewed Rocky's throat muscles in her jaw. At that moment, Chase wet himself on the floor as he stared in horror at his wish that has gone to his aunt friend. He slowly began to move towards him like a predator. He then tried to see those sunken, dead-like eyes. A sign of the pup he once loved is still there. But all he could ever, ever see was the monster who murdered the last of his friends. She now charged forward, forcing him to roll away before rushing down the hall with their shrieking behind him. Just as she was about to jump on him, he turned around and barked, NET! From his pup pat, the net launcher fired and hit its target to bring the zombified sky down. She roared and hissed as she struggles to get free, as Chase stared at her with pity and tears in his eyes. He spotted a nearby lead pipe and knew what to do. He picked it up in his mouth and walked over it, and watched as she tried to get to him to feast on. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, he whispered, before using his strength to smash the pipe onto her head. She then screamed as she did for the second time, then a third. He kept hitting repeatedly, even when her head had been turned to mush. He just kept hitting her with as tears ran down his face. He didn't even know how long he did it, but soon stopped when he felt his stomach in despair. His entire coat was covered in blood, but his soul had been drowning not long before that. He slowly got up and then summoned his pup tag. Rider, sir? Nothing. He didn't even bother trying to call for the second time. He knew what it meant. He laughed a bit before getting up to find his the last friend had left him in his world. He made his way to the crossroads in the halls, where he had split up from Ryder. He just kept walking forward, his feet directing him to while he, his mind was just continued to think about all the good times he had in his life. His days saving Adventure Bay, the fun and games, the holidays, all of them special in their own way. A small smile decorated his lips. Life was good, but how? Now with all of his family dead, what was the point of life anymore? 
He had ruined it. He had destroyed it. Now he wanted to end it. There was only one way to end it. One way to justify everything. He just hoped that there was nothing after death because deep down, he was afraid of what punishment he would go to get in hell. But then again, maybe it was justified. He continued to walk down the blood-stained halls until he heard teeth against flesh. He turned a corner and saw in the bright light and brought his tears to his eyes. His owner, Ryder, was staring at the ceiling with his eyes wide and shocked expression as a certain Dalmatian he once mourned ate into his ribcage. As Marshall was sensing his fresh meat, Ray's his soaked jaw was rotting to the point where you could see the gumless teeth. His sulking eyes peered off his fleshed face, reflected off of the blood-soaked pool of his owner's life assistance. His tail was all gone, but the suit was buried in his own ruins. Chase would have been angry, afraid, or even upset that Ryder was dead, but all he cared about was that just ending this once and for all. I should have done this a long time ago, he thought as he stepped forward. Hey, buddy, remember me? Then the growl on Marshall's lips indicate a yes or a no. But Chase didn't care, just as he continued. I would have gotten the world to see you alive again, especially since I'm the one who got you killed. I guess all they say, be careful what you wish for. He looked at Ryder and sighed. Well, at least he's with the others now. He then, Chase then stood up and then raised his arms. Go on, finish it. Finish me. Just do it, Marshall. Just come and kill me. And so Marshall charged. He charged forward with his jaws ready to pounce. Chase closed his eyes and waited for the final sweet release that he had desired for so long. This was justice. He would die by Marshall's jaws and either oblation. His final punishment was last for his selfishness and the mystery he had caused with it. This was all he deserved, and this was what he wanted. And yet again, he was denied it. All of a sudden, the twist beyond its fate itself, a part of the ceiling just fell right then and there, crushed Marshall's head in a wet, squishing noise. Chase opened his eyes and felt his jaw drop all the sight of his dead friend again, twitching underneath the weight of the cement and rock that had fallen on his head and turned into a squished melon. When he had stopped moving, Chase silently just sat there, trying to paw process all what had happened. He was alive. Again. There was only one left alive. Marshall was dead. Sky was dead. Rubble, Zuma, Rocky, and Ryder. They were all dead. He was the only one alive. Even when he wanted it, he was willing to allow it. His fate somehow let him live. And that's when he lost it. He cursed and screamed. He then started throwing anything in his way, way in his direction there was. He wasn't supposed to be alive. He was supposed to die. He had to die. Why wouldn't any power in this universe allow him to suffer like this over and over again? He tried to finish off something to end his life. A knife, a gun, sharp glass, rope. Anything he could do it would be quick or painless. But there was nothing to could be fine. God damn it, he shouted, gasping for breath. Fine, I'll just get in my car and drive off a cliff, huh? You like that? He then rushed back to the entrance and was about to break down the door when he froze. It was there. The thing that had caused him, caused him, them all the pain and suffering since that godforsaken day. In the middle of the entrance, with the bright light standing above it, it was the monkey's paw with only one finger left unfolded. Chase growled and stared at him with intensely. How could he have melted it and with all of his angry gaze alone? He walked over to the hand and very every desire to rip it apart, come forward and held it in his paws. With tears in his eyes, he screamed, Everything is your fault. You did this. You did this to me. I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. I wish I never got you in the first place. And just like that, the last finger folded, and the second later, Chase was gone. A flicker of a light from the lights that had made the entire room dark before turning back on with no chase of him, nor the monkey's paw. There was a lot you could say about Paw Patrol police officer squad and leader Chase. You could say that he was a natural leader, 
brave, daring, athletic, popular, friendly, and even childish at times. But he'll vigorously deny it. Of course, one word with all of his friends came to their minds was that the workaholic. It wasn't all that. Chase didn't know how to have fun or even relax. But he did intend to get caught up into acting as a professional at times. To the point where he often forget what he needed to do. Whatever was training, patrolling, planning new team tactics, testing equipment, or even cleaning up the lookout. Chase had a bad habit of getting too caught up in the moment. Thankfully, Marshall was there to drag his sorry butt away from, from all the duties and towards downtown where the two could relax. Come on, Marshall. Did you really have to drag me by the tail in front of everyone? Asked Chase, glaring at his best friend. Would you rather have me use the rope? Asked Ch Marshall, grinning as the two stopped at the corner. There, at the crossing light turned red. Besides, you were driving everyone stir-crazy with your antics. All I was just doing was making sure the lookout was secure and did have, have a break last month after all, Chase replied huffling. That was all... I'll just Callie just chasing after Chekadita who took her mouse toy, giggled Marshall. Chase signed and walked ahead of his best friend. Signed no to the crosswalk to walk. Okay, maybe a bit I was Onk Chase turned to see what that noise was, and at that moment a large SUV smashed into him, sent him sailing across the air before landing on a streak of his own blood. Chase shouted Marshall as he rushed over to his bleeding and broken friend. He shouted his name a few more times, but there was no response, nor breathing from any motionless pup. He shouted the nearby pedestrians to get help, as she tearfully hold Chase days to open his eyes and hang on. The flea market was behind him, and they were planning to go, but that was all forgotten in his mind.